In the psychedelic bayous of Houston, Texas, a form of hip hop began to emerge that would change a city and eventually spawn a new genre. Distinguished by its slow down tempo and hypnotic trance, chopped and screwed music became the defining style of Houston, Texas, and a cultural phenomenon that would change hip hop forever. To understand the genesis of its creation, we need to travel back over 20 years to the south side of Houston, Texas. Robert Earl Davis Jr., better known by his stage name, DJ Screw, began releasing his patent screw tapes all across the south side of the city. Here's where it all happened at the south side house. Meet DJ Screw, the man who has created a new sound. He DJs at nightclubs, and now he's come up with a new twist on rap music that is taking him from the underground to the mainstream. He slows down rap music, mixes in other rap cuts and even adds his own rap. These slow down tempos created a new type of hip hop ideal for lounging in the hot Houston summers. Screw's mixtapes began getting notoriety over the early 90s and eventually began selling out to a wide audience all across South Houston. Soon enough, DJ Screw had earned enough reputation to begin collaborating with other rappers on the South Side. He began recording these artists and continued to slow down their records. The influence of Screw began to spread even further until he decided to eventually form his own coalition, the Screwed Up or S-U-C. How y'all doing? You already know. DJ Screw, know what I'm saying? Screwed up click, A-Town, Texas. This troupe of rappers included local legends like Fat Pat, and Lil Kiki. It's me and Fat Pat, we seen everybody come. We seen the Screwed Up Click come, and the actual Screwed Up Click in the beginning was me, Fat Pat, and Screw, like, run DMC. But over time, more artists would join the collective. Over the course of a decade, DJ Screw would go on to work with artists like ESG, Lil Flip, UGK, Trey, and many, many more. During this time, he released over 300 mixtapes with the SUC. It wasn't until 1996, however, until DJ Screw released his most important record ever, and perhaps the most important record in the legacy of Chopped and Screwed Music, Three in the Morning. I'm draped up and dripped out, know what I'm talking about, three in the morning, getting the get out the stand spot. The album highlighted the core of what Chopped and Screwed Music could be and spread the influence of the scene and and its drug culture across the city. And when it comes to discussing hip hop, the drugs associated with the act will undoubtedly be heard within the music. Chopped and screwed music is no exception. In fact, describing a chopped and screwed remix is similar to describing the effects of lean. It's codeine promethazine. It's a slow drug, it, it slows everything down. I think in order to understand syrup, you really have to understand Houston because Houston is a big, sprawling, slow, hot city. I mean, we have Nine months of summer. You gonna take this, mm, 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 do this like here, and this is where the wonder starts. How does the syrup make you feel? Like there's like a veil between you and the rest of the world, and all of a sudden your whole body is warm. <laughs> Lean's popularity in Houston spread in conjunction with Screw's music. The two complemented each other and the culture spread across the city. The serve, it, it's, it's part of our hustle. It's not a fad, it's just a way of life. Up until the mid-90s, chopped and screwed music was a style exclusive to the south side of Houston, Texas. But with its growing popularity, the north side began creating their own chopped music and finding their own success. In 1997, Michael 5000 Watts and OG Ron C formed the record label Swisha House. They recruited their own artists from North Houston and began releasing their own mixtapes. Slim Thug, Mike Jones, Paul Wall, and Chameleonaire all began under the rising label. However, some members of the SUC believed that this sound should remain exclusive to the South as they birthed the style. This caused a division between North and South Side rappers with feuds and, of course, diss tracks. When Screw was first started with this music, just to be honest, our music, when I say us, as far as the Screw, it wasn't for them. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for the North Side. It was a South Side thing. It was a collaboration of South Side hoods coming together and making tapes. And, and we used to be talking North Side shit on here. This feud between North and South ultimately divided the city. Man, it was about 10 years ago, man, when it was real heavy beef between the North Side of town and the South Side of town. A lot of people don't understand, like, the North Side and the South Side from Houston, right? Before, it was like New York and New Jersey. It's like, we're in the same city, but it's like, it's totally different. Then within a two year period, the SUC lost two of its most important contributors. Founding member and local rap legend, Fat Pat, was gunned down in the winter of 98. And the SUC originator, DJ Screw, tragically overdosed in the winter of 2000. These untimely deaths left a chasm in the SUC that could never truly be filled and dealt a crippling blow to the chopped and screwed scene. Meanwhile, tensions in Houston were still heating up. 
On top of the North and South side beefs, members of Swisha House were beginning to have their own internal struggles. Rising Swisha House duo Paul Wall and Chameleonaire, whose debut album Get Your Mind Correct, put them on the map. However, a deep feud with each other began when Chameleonaire refused to sign back to Swisha House after his contract expired. The bitter rivalry pitted Chameleonaire against Mike Jones and Paul Wall, and the three released countless diss tracks targeting one another. Me and Paul used to be like brothers, man, and I tell everybody that, you know what I'm saying? We grew up together. It was, it was, it was, you know, just like any other brother relationship. But then, you know, we started growing into two different people. But despite these feuds, hip hop artists from Houston began getting national notoriety. In the mid 2000s, the chopped and screwed scene began spreading outside of Houston and into mainstream America. With the help of Swisher House and Warner Brothers, Mike Jones released his highly anticipated debut album. Who is Mike Jones? The album became a smash hit and landed the number three spot on the Billboard 2000. Singles like Back Then and Still Tippin' were being played on airways nationwide. Chameleonaire 2 found global success after he signed a deal with Universal and released one of the most successful albums to come out of the Houston rap scene, The Sound of Revenge. The album debuted at number 10 on the Billboard 200 and would later become certified platinum with over 1.5 million record sales. They see me rolling. The single off the record Riding would even go on to win a Grammy for Best Rap Performance, and its Chopped and Screwed remix would go on to be the most sold Chopped and Screwed record of all time. Back in Houston, the feud between North and South was beginning to die down. Perhaps the most decisive moment that diffused tensions was when founding SUC member Lil Kiki collaborated with Swisha House on the record Chuck Up the Deuce. Texas boys be going off, representing the North and South. I chuck up the deuce for the South and the North. The record was created with intention to unite both sides of the city. Was at the time, I'm just keeping it real, screwed up click, we wasn't what we were supposed to be. We had a lot of deaths, I had trouble, Pat was gone. So for them to reach out and give me an opportunity to come back to the game, it was very influential because the north side and the south side, the beef was gone, but it, it was still there. Outside of Houston, Drake and ASAP Rocky have all praised Houston and its chopped up scene. Most recently, the legacy of DJ Screw has even been kept alive by Houston native and global superstar Travis Scott. He features a track on Astro World named R.I.P. Screw and even projected an image of the late DJ on his SNL performance of Sicko Mode. And if you need further proof of Screw's influence on hip hop, just listen to some of your favorite records. You'll soon notice how many rappers use Screw's slow down technique for its hypnotic effect. Make sure to let us know what you think in the comments section, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and follow all things All Deaf Music. For The Report, I'm Kayla Nicole.